Welcome back, everyone back to another Coffee with Newtopia consultant series webinar series. So Larry Dodo, Chief Commercialization Officer with Newtopia, and Jeff Ruby, Founder and CEO. Hey everyone, great to be here again. Thanks for joining us. So many of you um, have loyally followed us through the last several months. Thank you so much. And hopefully you have picked up your Starbucks. If not, please make sure to do so. And for our new guests, welcome. Know that this is completely open forum. Any questions, any comments, we need to hear from you. So don't hold back. So Jeff, before we dig into really what the topic of today is, which is Utopia's expanded offerings and ability to reach a broader audience, mm -hmm. I want to roll time back a little bit to the findings we had when we undertook our randomized control trial with Aetna. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe just level set us as to what were those findings and what does it actually mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I think it's no secret at this point that before commercializing Utopia, um, we wanted to embark on, on getting gold standard data. Right. We wanted to make sure that we weren't bringing the best sales you know, pitch to the field. We wanted the best clinical evidence. And so we embarked on this large scale randomized control trial with 2,835 Aetna employees with a big participant group, a big um, randomized control group. And we followed that cohort for three full years. And the goal there was to really demonstrate um, you know, industry leading outcomes around engagement, clinical risk reduction, and right. cost savings in ROI. And it was, um, you know, on we published our results, uh, our 12-month outcomes in the Journal of Occupational and Environmental Medicine, and really demonstrated on the engagement then some really powerful outcomes of the 1,890 individuals we marketed to. We had 600 register or 32 uh, percent, and then 445 or 25 percent of those we marketed to start the program, which was really great. Right. Uh, and then we saw really tre tremendous engagement rates at the end of 12 months with 50 or 223 remaining engaged. And our book of business across 2016 also showed real consistency. When people know they're at risk, we're seeing anywhere between 25 and 30 percent, 25 and 35 percent of the audience we market to start the program, right. which is really great. It's a lot. It, and it, it really leads the industry. Mm. But I think there's been a realization that we could do a lot better right. because the inverse of that 25 you know, percent in, that we published in the RCT is that 75 percent of the people we're speaking to on a regular basis hmm. we don't have something for or we haven't been able to really meet them where they are and we think we can do a lot better. So you know what's fascinating as you're walking through so just to tee up that 25 percent of the folks who are invited who are determined to be at risk and therefore eligible for Utopia. Yeah. 25% of them are actually enrolling, which we know is, in the industry is heralded as a, s a significant success. But I, I, you know, I think back to one of our, our key customers who said to me, you know, Lara, I'm tired of being applauded for showing 10% engagement in stats and having every you know, consulting house applauding my, my efforts to move the needle when in fact I'm moving nothing. And you know, we, we sit back and we say 25% enrollment, again, we, we, we celebratory. But if we have to turn it around and say, well, hold on, we, we failed by 75%. It doesn't feel so good. No, absolutely <laughs> right. right. And, and I, I'd say the whole you know, mission and mandate yeah. at Newtopia is to inspire individuals to live healthier every day. But that's all individuals, not just those 25%, right. if you will. And that this hyper-personalization, this N of one approach, we've realized mm -hmm. that actually we could do far better by taking that precision health approach to precision communications right. and to really precision engagement on the front end. And, and I'd say keep this promise of meeting people where they are in a more significant way. Right. Um, whereas I think the lessons from uh, we learned from the randomized control trial was that when we found individuals who were at risk, our goal was how can we then put them into this gold standard behavior change right. formula of ours through one years, two years, three years. But I think where the learning has come uh, is that um, to ask that much of individuals at the outset, that kind of commitment, it can be a little bit scary sure. and, and I think has led to some of the limitations uh, in the people that have signed mm -hmm. up just because they see this as a minimum one year program. Right. Well, just to unbundle that a little bit. So I think, you know, two things are standing up. The one is, I, I don't know about any of you, but I'm not signing up for a one year program mm -hmm. unless I'm feeling pretty compelled and motivated. Well, right? and, and when you think about it, I mean, when you think of the success we've had with 25% of the audience that we're reaching out to signing up for that from a company that you know, for the most part they've really never heard of, yes. it's actually quite amazing yes. that we've had the results we've had given the ask 
the big heavy lift up front, this right. you know, lifestyle change program with a minimum year commitment. Right. But think of the possibilities when you start mm -hmm. to open up and, and really consider where those individuals are, their readiness to change, um, and, and truly meet them where they are, right. and then position the entry point in a more suitable manner to, 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 you know, to, that would be less upfront mm -hmm. commitment. And, and I think that's been our realization and our lessons over this year and where we're really right. improving. So, you know, for those of us who come with a bit of a marketing background and we put on our marketing hat for a second, um, there's a whole stage of awakening or readiness to buy or contemplation to make a decision. And it's no different in the world of behavior or habit change, which I know we're going to chat a little bit about. But if we think about this big ask, so again, for, for our newer listeners, we, we work with our customer base and consultants to identify who is going to be eligible for Utopia. So we're either going to be taking a look at biometric results or we have an online risk screener to determine eligibility. At that point, we're reaching out to these folks to say, essentially, you know, unfortunately, you've won a lottery, you don't want to win, right? Mm -hmm. But you're at risk for preventable chronic disease and, you know, invite them to join Utopia, which is a year plus program of one-on-one -on -one coaching with a personality matched um, coach who we call the inspirator because they're going to be there side by side to partner with them on their journey. We know that we go through a tailored programming that's designed for that individual based on their unique lifestyle, um, their own genetic makeup as it relates to how their body processes fats. Uh, and various other goodies that we, we can go into another day. But through this one year ask, right, as we've said, there's 75% who either A, even once we've identified through blood work or through the risk assessment, the reality that they are at risk has not hit home yet. It's not sure. real, it's abstract, or they're in a stage of denial, right? And I, the model I often compare to is addiction, right? Mm -hmm. Before you can start to work on any sustainable change, you have to be ready to acknowledge you have an issue. Right. And that's no different when you're talking about lifestyle change for preventative disease. So I'm going to pause there for a second and just ask any thoughts or commentary you'd add to, you know, how do we awaken folks who either are not ready to accept that they need to make a change, they know it, they're not ready to accept it, or two, are not even aware that they actually are facing this cliff of, of chronic disease. Right. And, yeah. and I, I think, I think that the answer lies in, in really just is building a relationship. Um, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, taking the, it's taking the time to get to know each individual really well. So it's taking the input that we're gathering um, a, about each individual, just some of the understanding of the social determinants of where they're from, um, who they are, the data that we're collecting about them right. around their personality, their motivation, their readiness to change, and then having that inform the, the entry points. Right. Uh, so instead of taking all that information and then saying, okay, great, here's your one-year program, actually tailoring the entry points to really think through, you know, based on that readiness mm -hmm. to change, based on what you've tried and failed before, based on your social determinants of health, where would you like to come in? Um, and, and so, again, move away from this one-size-fits-all offering, this, in our case, year-long experience, in another right. curriculum case, this 16-week program, which is the same for everyone, and actually tailor the front end to meet them and to meet their needs and to meet their comfort. Uh, and if we could use more of a breadcrumb approach, yes. whether it's you know, week by week, month by month, or you know, a couple months at a time to build their confidence and their trust, I think that's how we can overcome some of that fear to commit right. and or fear of the unknown and or that denial that you were referring right. to. Yes, well said. So again, I think for our folks out there who are listening, that's, you know, just to kind of clarify. So in Utopia, our classic disease prevention platform, which we've shown with Aetna and our RCT, 25% um, enrollment stat. We know engagement um, at the end of the 12th month is over 50%. Proven results with a 2x ROI. We have that locked. We're talking about the other 75%. So we know how to drive that. But how do we start to warm up and get folks moving along that continuum of readiness to change to make the one year plus commitment and to truly impact their life. And so how we do that is the discussion of today. And as you're chatting through uh, the different entry points, the, the analogy in my mind is Netflix. So I don't know, I, I'm an avid Netflix watcher. I don't know oh, about you. Absolutely. All right, um, it's definitely, I'm killing my family life at two, three in the morning, but <laughs> um, be that as it may, um, it's fascinating when I look at my profile of movies I'm watching versus my husband versus my children, like completely different. And it's this whole predictive analysis that says, because you watch Black Ops Down, right? Mm -hmm. you might want to watch 
I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. this show on World War II. Um, or because you watched, you know, Good Good Wife, you might mm -hmm. want to watch House of Cards. So this ability to say, because you like this, you may like that, I think that is a little bit of the utopian expanded offering is to say, this individual may not be ready, that risk, whether they've acknowledged it or not, but they're not ready to make this commitment. But they may be ready to read an article about how heightened stress reduces lifespan. Mm -hmm. Or they may be read to talk about how three simple lifestyle changes could add 10 years to their life. Really mm -hmm. basic, um, almost industry-wide, global-wise. It's not about them. It's more about a trending topic sure. to start to warm them up. And then they're on their journey of breadcrumbing to your point that they start to say, because I enjoyed this article, our tool is saying, you might want to watch this video on stress. Right. And because you watch this video, you might want to have a single coaching call to talk about a few changes you can make. Right. But it's not putting this pressure on for one-year commitment, but it is starting to warm up readiness to change that will have a direct impact on small bite-sized pieces of behavior, but ultimately is to get that individual mm -hmm. to a place where they can join their 25% peer group and really have lifelong impact. Is that yeah. what we're saying, Jeff? Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I think ultimately either the industry is going to be happy with the 25%, which a lot of companies would dream of achieving. True, true. And while we're pleased we've achieved it and we continue to achieve it consistently with the customers, there's a much bigger opportunity because the big opportunity here is to get at that 100% of the at-risk audience. Yeah. You know, you know, just what was it? Uh, you know, today we've just heard that 50% of the U.S. population is now at risk for uh, high blood pressure, hypertension has just uh, m moved up. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden there's been this a bit of this all diabetes all the time, but lurking there is this massive risk for hypertension, heart disease that's mm -hmm. impacting as a number one killer. Uh, this, the impetus for prevention is high, but we can't just be happy with the 20% of right. those who are ready and those who are ready to commit to a 16-week kind of program mm -hmm. or a year kind of program. It's how do we understand everyone? And to your point, it's using the analytics that we have, the predictive analytics right. that we can achieve through a flywheel kind of model, mm -hmm. but then tailoring the entry point to meet people where they are. Um, and you know, some people may not want to join a group right away. Right. Some people may not see themselves as needing or wanting a coach right away. But yet, if we just use smaller breadcrumbs right. and, and provide value and build relationship, I think that's really the key to starting to see how do we uh, start achieving a 70, 80, 90 percent engagement rates and then continue to have that impact and that cost the impact across a much broader right. range of the at-risk community. Absolutely. You know, I know you and I have sidebought often about various coaching that we do in our private lives, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think both Jeff and I have shared that just due to travel schedules and family commitments, um, we've both even had, you know, whether it be professional coaching, personal coaching, where it's been years of relationships, but at no point have I signed up to say I'm signing up for a three or four year relationship, right? It's a it's a one by one touch point that just doesn't go away. And for some folks that's it. And we understand that with our expanded offering model, the individual who psychologically just can't even comprehend taking ten minutes for themselves between maybe they're a single mom, right? Juggling three jobs. Um can't think about making a one-year time commitment, but could think about having a one-off call this week. And you know what? After that call, thinking about, I can't wait to have another call in another two weeks. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, it has been six months. And before you know it, they actually are on the full program, giving themselves this gift of changing habits that's going to really add years and life and quality back, sure. back to them and their family. Yeah, and I, I also, I think as much as it's, it's, it's a little hard to, 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 we drink our Kool-Aid around here. Right. We know what Newtopia is. The consultant world mm -hmm. knows who Newtopia is in this landscape of other providers. Uh, to the consumers out there, whether it's members of a, of a plan or mm -hmm. employees, they don't know who we are and we're being introduced and there's this expectation on the back of an invitation or an email. All of a sudden everyone's going to flock Right. Um, to something they don't know when it's actually you know trying to modify some of the hardest things Absolutely. you know their their habits um, their their long term behavior their risk and so part of this I t think as well mm -hmm. is it's an awareness that you've got to build some confidence you've got to build some relationship you've got to build some brand equity um, and you know t once that starts to happen then it starts to snowball uh, right. and then the comfort to 
either learn you're at risk or if they know they're at risk to commit gets a lot greater. And so right. this has been a realization and a bit of an aha for us mm -hmm. as well as we've been evolving in the market, but we've been seeing some really exciting outcomes Absolutely. as we've been starting to open up the entry points and use this breadcrumb approach. 100%, and I think you know, just pivoting a little bit and putting on a business hat for a moment, um, or a sales business development hat, we know that the world of um, engaging customers in general has shifted, right? The idea that good old fashioned features and benefits is long gone. Mm -hmm. um, you have to understand your, your customer or client, be able to do a needs analysis, really consult as to value add and solve a problem, right? If you can't solve a problem, you are completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And as we kind of prospect out there, we understand that as we know, Utopia Star one size does not fit all. And whether that be how we've designed our curriculum for our one year disease prevention program, or whether it be how we engage a customer on figuring out uh, you know, how we're going to contract with them, or whether it be through to how we're going to engage that participant to get them to our core classic program, we have to constantly be thinking consultative style. What is the problem we're trying to solve for? And so you know, for our consultant community out there, we want you to understand that we remain the same true, tried, proven, and tested utopia, mm -hmm. right? proven results, nothing different. But how we're engaging with customers is evolving daily to understand what is their unique culture, what messaging does or does not resonate in that environment, and designing really in this world that shifted, it's not features and benefits, but it's how you get your message out, yeah. right? And so figuring that's really what this is, is how do we design a communication strategy that for those that are ready to change and are aware, we have a really clean user experience for them to get them into New Tokyo Classic, where they're going to be embraced by their care specialist who's going to onboard them and really be their quarterback concierge through the one to two year journey. But have this inspirator who's going to be there side by side, holding them accountable on the tough days, celebrating with them on the great days. But that's there. But for the other folks, we've got to figure out what is going to be the key that's going to wake them up to say, hey, I'm ready to do one step today, one step, and that's what it is. So we're looking forward to chatting with you and your customers on what is the right communication strategy to start to not just impact the 25% who we know we do, but it's the other 75. And ultimately, going back to that customer I referenced, do a significant amount more in changing this needle, not only in lifestyle, but in the cost curve, because yeah. we know dollars and cents is, is real. And, and I, I think it all comes back to this obsession with hyper-personalization, this obsession with getting to N of 1, not just N of 1 in terms of the experience that we're building that's going to be meaningful to move the dial, but N of 1 in terms of really spending the time to learn about each uh, prospective participant, right. spending the time to learn about what it's going to take, you know, literally designing a communication plan for each individual that's tailored to them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's N of 1 thinking across communications, initial engagement, and then ultimately des you know, designing this product service or what I would refer to as this experience. Right. But when you start thinking that way um, and getting to, to that, that, uh, you know, that type of um, approach, that's the only way that you're going to be able to master how do we deal with the, the high right. end, front end, and also be able to deliver sustainable habit change you know, through um, and, and over time. Well said. You said something earlier I wanted to just go back to because we kind of drove right through it. And that is, so we have a, a release, if you haven't seen it in time, from American Heart Association and American College of Cardiology that has issued a statement saying that the threshold for blood pressure should be lower. Hmm. And they've moved the measurement down to 130 over 80, right? Which is a big shift. It's going to really open up the field. But what Jeff and I have been chatting through, and I'm sure a lot of uh, you folks out there do as well, is we know practically that hypertension is the number one or number two cost item on most of our large jumbo customers' claims data, right? It's a significant issue. Yet we know that diabetes keeps playing out as a very uh, sexy offering, a lot of money being thrown at it, a lot of airtime, and a lot of good work done on it. But we have this cost beast of hypertension. Yeah. And literally this morning I had a chat with someone who had shared a close to home stroke in their family and the fin financial burden is just tremendous and particularly in a deductible plan where I heard a different quote actually yesterday that I think one of the highest reasons for bankruptcy in the US today, particularly within the middle class, is based on unforeseen uh, costs on healthcare. Yep. So put this whole puzzle back together. We have a, a good recognition that we need to broaden the playing field Hypertension is real, it's stepped out the corner, it does cause death. Right? And if not, real impact to 
to life and lifestyle, right? It, it's real. But there are things we can do to prevent it. Yeah. And so the question I think is, why haven't we seen the same airtime on it as diabetes? Or maybe this is the start of the next trend. But what is your take on just opening this risk field and how does Newtopia play in that chat? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've always been a little bit fascinated by the siloed approach to prevention. Right. And especially, and again, I taking nothing away from the very good work that mm. the CDC has done on the diabetes prevention program, it is specifically for individuals with an elevated you know, A1C or, right. or blood, you know, blood glucose. And, and there are lots of individuals, you know, probably over 100 million Americans today have that risk. But it's, it's, it's one uh, of the range of items. Mm -hmm. you know, we've preferred to stay with the focus on the pre-chronics before they become chronic, this idea of focusing on the more technical metabolic syndrome, yes. you know, where you're looking at individuals who are, who are pre-obese, pre-hypertension, uh, or cardiovascular disease, pre-diabetes, pre-stroke, mm -hmm. even pre-NASH, right. the reality is there's a bigger audience out there uh, than just the um, you know, pre-diabetes alone. And that's certainly something mm -hmm. we've always been focused on. We always will continue to. Right. Um, and that, in fact, our results um, provide evidence on uh, that for that broader audience with multiple risk factors, that's where we're having our best outcomes. And those happen to be the most expensive uh, individuals right now who are expensive in terms of cost for their problem and expensive who are about to become a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar a year problem right for employers. so just even to really drill it down into detail for our newer uh, listeners or, or those who are following us we talk about the risk factors what are the exact risk factors we and we actually look at so if we, there's five what are they yeah so I mean at the end of the day we're, we're looking for uh, individuals who have two or more out of range risk factors, those being waist circumference, ideally, or we could use BMI as a proxy, uh, blood glucose, uh, blood pressure, and given the new guidelines, we'll be uh, anticipating yes. to expand as those have now been released, uh, uh, triglycerides and, and HDL, uh, cholesterol. Those are the five metabolic risk factors, and so we're looking for any two of the five. The reason also for the two of the five is they're a little bit more complicated uh, to work with, it's not to say that someone with just A1C or high um, blood pressure aren't, but those are a little simpler, a little um, less expensive a problem. You know, we're really trying to solve a roughly $2,000 problem uh, for those individuals with right. two or more risk factors uh, who are about to become much more expensive if those two start to expand into three or into full-blown chronic disease. That's right. Uh, you know, going back to this is an expensive problem to solve, yeah. right? Uh, and it's real. The other piece that you know we talk about is how do we measure success? So we, we've got our proven RCT, so we know we've proven it out. But mm -hmm. for, for those of you who are listening, thinking that was then, this is now, what mm -hmm. about my customer? You know, there's a couple of ways. Uh, the first piece I would flag is we use weight as a proxy, right? Especially uh, a percentage of body weight reduction. Yes. So it's the, we're we're not a a weight loss program right. per se. No, nothing wrong with the programs that are, but we're really using percentage of body weight as a proxy, we want to move the dial on those five risk factors and we know that a percentage of body weight reduction uh, north of 5%, we target 7% as our ultimate mm -hmm. goal, should have a positive impact across those five. And in fact, uh, what we've published and seen over and over again is that with that percentage of body weight reduction, we should see an improvement across all five of those metabolic right. risk factors. And that's when the body's really beginning to heal itself and reverse the, the damage potentially done or move away from that risk trajectory. Very much, and, yes. and, and that's the best shot uh, that we have to actually prevent the onset and bringing that individual employee back to healthy, both healthy um, for their own, you know, th their own health, and, and but also healthy from a cost perspective, right. uh, which should be you know roughly thirty four hundred dollars per year just for right. paid medical insurance alone. So to your point, we are not a weight loss company. Mm -hmm. We are a habit changing, sustainable behavior changing group, yeah. and we use weight or, or body weight loss as a proxy, right? Yeah. So it's a slow and steady and tedious process because mm -hmm. it's not a fit into the swimsuit for the summer program, right? Yeah. No, I'm sorry, and, and yeah. I think you. It's a really important point because um, the way we also really differentiate in the market is we're not a teaching and education platform. We don't have a one curriculum that we provide to everyone. And again, while those are important, we're trying to get to how do we work with each individual, right. meet them where they are, learn a lot about them, but ultimately how are we going to sustainably change those habits? That's right. And our expectation is actually that our results 
grow over time. So as opposed to hoping that at the end of 16 weeks we're going to have an outcome, cross our fingers and see degradation from there, which unfortunately is the state of the art yeah. in disease prevention today. Right. We've actually seen quite different outcomes. We're not as good at the end of 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't want to be. It's unfortunately true. I want to yeah. be the best at 12 months, at 18 months, at 24 That's months, right. and 36 months. And the only way to achieve that is sustainable habit change. It's not about teaching. It's about working through um, each individual to sustainably change those ha habits. That's where you've got you know, real inflection point in terms of sustainability and, and cost savings ultimately for the payer right. or for the employer. I was at a conference last week and it was a, a really a beautiful thing to see. I had complete strangers coming up to a booth saying, I'm a utopian. And literally having lost over 100, 150 pounds, but it was that wasn't the story, Jeff. The story was their life that's changed. Yeah. They had energy, they were doing things they hadn't been able to do for years, take part of activities. Just the whole outlook to life had shifted. That's what this is about. The weight, again, it's the proxy, but it's not the story. The story is the actual lives of the individuals. And so for those of you out there who work with customers who are very committed and passionate to their biometrics, we applaud that and, in fact, have many customers who like to compare even and say, we may want to have our program to compare ingoing biometrics to biometrics after one year. So we do, again, with this whole idea of hyper-personalization, it's about the participant coming through and it's about you. It's about you and the customer building a plan, communication style, um, putting together how we're going to really look at what success means in an individualized approach because no two individuals are the same and no two, new, two companies are the same either, right? Absolutely right. right. Uh, again, un until we get to true hyper-personalization in the end of one, I know it sounds like a, this is all I talk about <laughs> because I think it's what's missing Yeah. Uh, and as much as I think the one-size-fits-all curriculums and education are important. In fact, I think everybody should have the benefit of that lifestyle one-on-one in their life. Right. But I don't expect that lifestyle one-on-one is going to be the sustainable habit change agent. It's going to be the catalyst right. for driving those changes, which unless they're, they're made uh, in a world where unfortunately the deck is stacked against us from the mm -hmm. food policies and marketing policies and all these things, unless you can get to that sustainable habit change that grows, we don't have a shot at reducing these costs. We, we really don't have a, a choice other than to move to that. Well said. Well said. So we're almost out of time. So just as we wrap up, again, if you haven't got your Starbucks, please do email us to ensure you get your coupon. Bring friends with next month. We really love chatting with you. And don't hesitate for one moment to reach out to Jeff Ruby or myself, Larry Dodo, with any questions, comments, or feedback. And just before we say goodbye for today, and I, before I turn to Jeff for final comments, we want to go back to the fact that we have our classic program, 25% proven enrollment stats and proven ROI of 2x that we continue to offer and continue to celebrate. But we understand that there's 75% of folks who need more help. And we are every day being an agile organization, figuring out better communication strategies to meet people where they're at. And that means working with you consultants, your customers, to uniquely understand what the right combination is of messaging to breadcrumb folks on their journey to sustainable habit change and ultimately just better lives and, of course, rewarding their employer with a better ROI at the end of the day as well. Yeah. Jeff, any final words before we say thank you and wrap up? No, I just I, I thank you so much for joining us. What we're talking about today, we're doing today. Uh, so we, we continually experiment, but we've been seeing amazing outcomes uh, in our ability to expand beyond that 25, 30 percent, uh, where we're starting to see some of our target audience achieve much higher numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and it's again, it comes from this passion and about just meeting people where they are and truly being hyper personalized and getting to end of one across the entire experience spectrum. And I think the more companies that start adopting uh, that approach, uh, the more we're going to have, you know, really bend the cost curve and achieve that triple aim uh, for that at-risk community uh, who are really being poorly served by existing condition management or wellness programs that just aren't focused at all on those things. That's right. Thank you so much, Jeff, and thank you to everyone, and we look forward to chatting again soon. Thank you.